I think he should just continue to race like a and embrace the the personality because the sport doesn't really have that. The following is a production of Dirty Mo Media. What's up, guys? Welcome to Action Detrimental. I'm Denny Hamlin, the host, I guess, and my co-host Jared D. Allen. I drive the number 11 car for Joe Gibbs Racing, and I co-own. I, I, I hate this whole thing. 2311 yeah. Racing, and yeah. I'm Jared, and I uh, wear a purple vest on the weekend and take pictures of race car drivers. Yep. Well, I tell you, alert, folks! Breaking news. Later in this show, we're gonna have our first guest. First guest is coming, so don't tune out because of the bad intro right off the bat. It's only going to get better. We had a great weekend, Darlington, Mother's Day weekend. Um, hate racing on holidays, Easter, Mother's Day. But sh- that that was Jeff Gordon's uh, excuse for not being at the NASCAR 75. Well, brunch this morning, he says his mother. So I'm like, hmm. well, we all have mothers, bud. So, um, yeah, it was a, a good race in Darlington. Um, I, I tell you. To start the weekend off, I mean, you had um, great truck race, Xfinity race. Xfinity, just cars just race. Phenomenal at that racetrack. It seems like we always have last lap passes at that track or a battle. And I, and I tweeted that this is, what, this is the recipe for good racing is that this is what happens when not all the cars run the same speed. You know, when, when there's a difference in the driver talent, there's a difference in... The, you know, uh, this car versus that car and speed. You have variability in the lap times because of the tires fall off. Um, just a great combination of them all. And uh, I tell you, it's just, it's really fun to watch uh, those Xfinity cars. And I, it just, there's something about it where it always comes down to the fastest guy by far or the fastest car by far is always put to the back for some reason of a Darlington race. And they're, do they make it back to the front? And when Kyle Larson went to the back with 40 something to go, I was thinking, no way he makes it to the back unless there was cautions, but th- there was cautions that helped him out. Um, but man, it was a great drive at the end. You saw a little, um, he gave Nemechek a little bit of a squeeze play down the back straight away. I know, um, some people on social media talking about, yeah, was that fair or not? I, you know, I think it was, I think it was, but I, I guess it depends on your perspective. Um, certainly, uh, I felt that my move was fair last week. Um, you know, I, Kyle was kind of out of shape, and I certainly wasn't going to lift on last lap. And so Kyle was, I think, just trying to use all the entry he could. And if you could kind of force Nemechek to just check up just a little bit to squeeze him on the entry, then he was going to be able to clear him, which he yeah. did. But Nemechek instantly went down and kind of, here, let me grab your right rear and help you get up the racetrack. And so we saw a great finish. Obviously, Nemechek didn't get the finish he was hoping for, but still top five, and uh, we saw a great battle. So I, that was fun to watch. I just appreciate John Hunter after the race saying that it was good hard racing. I like a driver that after they're in an incident like this, they can take emotion out of it and look at it um, objectively. objectively, which seemed like John Hunter did. And said, hey, that's that's good hard racing. Because you'd think a guy in his position would be like, oh, Larson comes down mm-hmm. here. He's a Cup Series driver. He's running me like this. You know, I lose lose out on a win that I was yep. very much deserving of. Um, yeah. You know, it just – it. I was talking to Kyle before the Cup intros, and he was like, I couldn't believe none of the Xfinity drivers were running a wide entry of one. That was something I started doing. 10, 12 years ago, now every driver does it, but it's it's just you, you get huge runs through the middle of turns one and two when you run a high entry. So because there's just you're searching for colder pavement. You're searching for where's the part on the racetrack where I can run that doesn't have rubber laid down on it because that has more grip. So I saw Kyle just really getting high on the entry of one and Nemechek just staying low, and I'm like, oh, he's just giving him way too much air up top there. And that allowed Kyle to just kind of reel him in. And, and I knew, like, you could, you saw this finish coming two or three laps beforehand. Uh, but fantastic finish. Uh, congrats to Kyle uh, on that. And uh, Nemechek for, for entertaining us, for sure. 
Moving on to Sunday, we had the cup race and again, uh, exciting finish. It was exciting for sure. Um, you know, for the early parts of the race, it looked like Martin Truex was going to just kind of walk away from this thing. And it's just crazy how much clean air played a, a factor. Like I thought at Kansas, it wasn't as big of a factor, but it just seemed like for whatever reason here, Darlington, you had to run right up on the wall. Um, I don't know what that is. Um, it, it seems like this track goes through weird phases where you can move around sometimes. I mean, we've seen races at Darlington where Harvick and these guys would run below the dotted line and turn three and four and make time, but everyone had to run up the racetrack. And so it's just weird, the ebbs and flows of this car to tire to racetrack configuration. And it just, um, you saw once guys got mired in the back that they just couldn't really make a whole lot of ground. Now I was invisible all day. I just kept losing one or two spots every run. Uh, I had major car issues. We think um, that we were going to check out and, and find out, but certainly very uncharacteristic of our team, our 11 team, and and our performance on Sunday. I hated it, but you know everyone kept a level head and we worked on it and got a top. 12 or something out of it because of all the crashes at the end so great job for my team for for keeping digging there we it was actually a decent points day because of all the carnage at the end we had Chastain and and a, a bunch of guys that were leading the points that uh you know kind of fumbled the ball so that was um it was exciting for sure I, I went back and I watched the highlights I watched the low lights uh I probably I did probably like a one hour skim of the race on, on the TV to kind of see what 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 all happened how did how was this thing playing out it was evident that certainly there was four cars that were good Chastain the 19 of Truex when he was up there uh the eight of Kyle Busch I think Kyle actually had a very very good car he didn't get to show it as much as he didn't lead but he was strong he Kyle was in the strong. mix. Yeah, he was in the mix all day. He the leaders were right there in front of him all day. And then Kyle Kyle Larson. So those were definitely the four superior cars. Then, you know, you got Byron. It's probably in the next tier right after. Um, but it was really fun. I mean, Bubba Wallace, he was he was fast when he was up front as well. So it just kind of depends. Like he got put back there in 14th, 15th where I was, and it just took him the whole race to kind of just chip away at yep. it and yep. had a few restarts that helped. And, um, yeah, it, it, it just, I don't know. Passing was a little more difficult uh, this time around. Was it more than, than anticipated? Or maybe it was me because my car was so off. But Was it more than anticipated, do you think, for the field as a whole, not just you? Um, I'm not sure. I'm, I, you know, it seemed like listening to the driver's comments after the race – they talked about track position a lot. I mean, that's important. It's always been important. But Darlington in the middle of the day, 90 degrees, it shouldn't be as much for sure. Like you have a good car. You should be able to just kind of, you should be able to go through the field. If you've got a good car, you should be able to move around different lines and find um, lines to, to avoid the wake of the other car. But I don't know. It's just... The little bit lower horsepower, you know, I looked at the lap time fall off. It's, you know, definitely less than what we've had in years past, but it's tough to say. It, it, it's it's really tough to say what, what made the race interesting um, from that standpoint. But I thought that the racing up front was very good. Like, those four guys mixed it up pretty well. No one really got out to a huge lead. Um, it seems like It seemed like to me that, the one car was really good in the long run. Um, 19 was good in the long run. And it just kind of, whoever caught traffic, that was like when the field would start to bunch up with those four drivers is whenever the leader would hit traffic. So uh, just kind of interesting from that standpoint. And then, you know, you get down to the end. You got 18 laps to go. Well, let me rewind before that. We had uh, Trick spun at the end of stage one or two, one 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 of them uh, battling I with, think it was with Ross. Yeah, I think it might have been two, and yeah, then um, and and so he dove in 
he, he was running Ross down because Ross was trying not to pass his teammate and lap him. Um, so Ross was just kind of maintaining behind Suarez there, trying to cut him a break. And Truex kind of was trying to make a low line, low push down to the bottom of the racetrack and got into Chastain and spun himself out. But um, that was kind of the downfall of Truex's day. You just caught it, kind of saw once he got from that point on, like I don't know that he did a lot of damage to his car, but he would. That's the track position, right? He got swallowed up on restarts. Like I don't. Does he? His it, car was. It looked like it was tight. Um, and it when he got in traffic, he just was really tight. That looked like a a dumb mistake to begin with. But if you're the leader in a race like this, are you? Do you not necessarily know how the track position is working? Like for Truex, right? To go in there and try to pass Chastain for the stage win, watching the race, I'm thinking, well, that's not worth it because now he's going to go back to 10th or whatever, and he's going to struggle to get back to the front. Does he know as the guy running up front all day that, hey, if I lose my track position, this is going to be a b to get back Well, to I think that he probably thinks his car is really good, and he's probably thinking he's not going to go back to 10th. He's not thinking, well, there's a chance I can wreck here. It looked like he was committed to running the middle line and he mm -hmm. thought Chastain was going to go up to the top lane like he had all other laps, but Chastain just hedged down a little bit to get clean air on his nose uh, because of the, he was catching the 99 and it just, they kind of collided at a weird point. And so um, certainly I think that when Truex fired off on the next restart, when he was ninth or 10th and got the dirty air, he was like, Oh boy, this yeah. is a lot different. Um, so it was just crazy how different it was. Like even when you came out after a green flags pit stop versus a caution and I was, you know, mired in the middle of the pack, man, it was crazy how much less grip the car had, um, in traffic versus out by yourself. So hopefully we get some fixes for that, um, you know, next year. And I, I think the NASCAR is working on it, but, uh, we still saw some great racing at the end. Um, you know, when you kind of digest this whole Chastain Larson thing, you definitely have to go back earlier, a previous restart. So, where Chastain was on the inside of Larson, and not so this is before the one where Larson kind of rubbed Chastain up. I think he was paying him back from earlier in, in the uh, earlier restart where Chastain was, he didn't give Kyle much room. Uh, I, I saw him, he slid up a great, he slid up pretty aggressively in the middle of one and two. It caused Kyle to kind of check up a little bit to, cause he probably thought he was about to get slammed. And then Ross just kind of kept pushing Kyle up and higher and higher on the exit of two, where it caused Kyle to get up in the stuff and the loose stuff. And then Kyle lost three or four positions. And then Kyle's one of those guys that like, He'll race you, you know, pretty fair, but you do stuff like that. Certainly he's going to, he'll give it back to you. Like he's going to, he's going to rough you up a little bit or, or maybe door you. Yeah. Uh, he's definitely a door in you kind of guy. And that's why you heard Ross after the Kyle. So then you had <clears throat> the restart with about, I don't know, uh, s nine to go or so. Kyle Larson goes in turn one. He's on the inside of Ross. He clearly just goes up there. This is the one that they, they wreck in the second row. Yes. Yeah. Yes. This is the one that takes Truex This out. is where Truex, I, I don't know, just completely missed his line and came up in front of Joey and, um, you know, took that whole field out. Speaking of which, NASCAR got – the order was all wrong. Like – I couldn't understand, and they even showed, and I, I know Kelly Crandall and a few other uh, media folks were questioning, well, you know, or they asked NASCAR to clarify, why are the, why were the cars that were in the wreck placed back in front of cars that missed the wreck? And they said, well, they maintain caution pace. Well, you watch the in-car camera, and, like, they were destroyed, and saying that they were running pace car speed was maybe probably a stretch. Like, that's a stretch. And there was cars clearly that passed them on the bottom. We just, we got to do a better job of getting these order right. Because what happened is, is that 
I pass these cars that were wadded up at the top of the track. I don't care if they're going straight or not going 35 miles per hour and they're straight. Well, they're in the wreck. Like they've yeah. got carnage all around. They're in the wreck. So we go around them on the, on the bottom side. Caution's out. Next thing you know, four guys go and pass me and go back up to their spot that they were in. Like they pass 10, 15 cars and then they just go get there. They go up there and they say, all right, pit road's open. And everyone's able to pit from their damn spot that they were in. And so that's why Chase Elliott, Brad Kozlowski, Harvick. Kevin Harvick all got good finishes. They should have been wherever they merged after they got clear of it and then maintained. It's not caution cars. It shouldn't be caution car speed. It should be a, whatever the other cars are running at the time, right? It's just they, they, they got to get the order better. If they got to stop the race or whatever, because right now it is, it's getting worse and worse. The whole free for all of a caution flies. And next thing you know, people are speeding up to try to cheat a few positions. Like they'll, they'll try to get in front of two or three cars and then hope NASCAR doesn't see it. Or, or if they do see it, well, then they'll go back to scoring loops or, you know what? Pits open. Let's go. We ain't got time to mess with this. So we got to get the order right. Cause yep. certainly I know the 23 got, you know, you know, kind of probably screwed on a few of them. I know whoever I was around, we, there, there, there was so many cars that passed us that were in the wreck that we didn't quite understand why they got to go back where they were. Bubba's tweet was eye opening because he tweeted the, the broadcast footage of the in-car camera of Harvick. <laughs> and it's like clear as day that he's in the wreck. He's in the wreck. But, and then you're thinking like, oh yeah, he started second on that last restart. I know. I'm really just wondering how his car wasn't demolished from the impact of hitting. It the was. Car. It was. That's why he, he even said he really had no chance to compete with Byron because the car was destroyed. And if you looked at Chase Elliott, he wasn't even near. Like he had, he started on the second row twice. He was he, sandwiched. He was up, and he wall. was yeah. his car was so destroyed he didn't even remotely contend because his car was destroyed. And the six, who knows how much damage he had? So it just it it kind of. They, they just need to work on it. They need to work on getting the order right before they open pit road. They need to stop the shenanigans of letting people try to speed back into their spot. Um, it, listen, it's a hard job. It's a thankless job up in that tower, but certainly something we got to work on. Um, okay, so back to... Okay, so let's go back. Larson and Chastain. So then Larson, he definitely got wronged by Chastain when he got moved up the racetrack in turn two. Not only did he lose the lead, he lost second and third place. He yep. went back to fourth. Yep. And that was a pretty crucial moment of the race. And then, so later on, and the TV was broadcast was all over. Clint did a great job of um, explaining it. He says, hey, you know, it's, don't think that Kyle Larson forgot about Chastain, you know, shoving him up the racetrack. Well, sure enough, they go into turn one and Kyle instantly just kind of lets go of the wheel and, and just kind of, moves up the racetrack. I mean, hate to say it, but it's very similar to what he, I did at Chastain. He, well, he did not let go of the wheel, he, though. It's <laughs> not actual. That is not an actual statement. That is that there's that is a... Um, Hyperbole. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Embellishing uh, what actually happened. So he, he let go of the wheel, which means he released the wheel and just says, I'm going to use up this room right here with Chastain. And so no harm, no foul. They, they were side by side. Caution came out. Video showed that Chastain was now the leader. Well, <laughs> well, Chastain then picks the inside. It's like, well, I, I'm not going to let that happen again. And you even heard him on the radio trying to analyze what, what lane do I pick? Well, the nine, he might not push me. And then the five will have the 24 pushing him. And that's not going to work. So and the five, are we even now? Yeah. Are we mark? even? Or are we going to do this again? So evidently he was worried about it not being even. So he chose the inside. And then he just went into the corner. And now again, I'm not sticking up for him. I'm not, for the record. Kyle did hedge down the racetrack a little bit. And anticipating that Chastain was probably going to run him up the racetrack. So he needed room. Yes, he wanted to have extra room to the wall. Correct. So... Either way, I think that they were going to make significant contact through as, as much throttle as um, they were carrying into the corner. 
But man, yeah, it was Chastain was probably more ahead of him than he had planned on being, and so Kyle, you know, got squished in the wall, and then Chastain wrecked himself, and so yeah, and then he saw Kyle just kind of keep the gas down. I wish he he should have just kept going. <laughs> I wish he would just kind of Not push them all down the, the back stretch. No, right into the pit lane. <laughs> just. Just yeah. dump him off at pit lane and then turn right and go back on the racetrack. But at that point, he's trying not to damage his car any more yeah. than it probably already is. Uh, but, yeah, certainly, you know, the five teams frustrated. Uh, you know, at Cliff Daniels, uh, <laughs> he, he's, he's a late race commentator. Uh, he, he said, Chevrolet, this is number five or number three. Third time Chastain's done this to us. He's rallying off these races that Chastain's taken Kyle out. I'm not I, listen. I'm not arguing with it. I mean, Chastain's got his his uh, he's got a piece of everyone here uh, yeah. lately. I it's mean, amazing because you're like thinking, can he go one week? Is there any is there any week where you can go without rubbing somebody the wrong way? Um, and you got a feel for the five team because they got taken out last week or a chance to win by some guy. They didn't get taken out. They finished second. I guess. <laughs> oh, you're. S- I'm now, just tongue This is what, as Ron Herbert would call, you're playing both sides. <laughs> he does. Yeah. You're playing both sides because Jared takes a few photos for Kyle Larson too. Don't let him fool you. Yeah, I see. You know, Kyle Larson. You got a picture of him on your your little your your the, briefcase the, thing oh. for your. It, a, there's it, no pictures of me. That's on a there. great sticker that Sonoma gave out for free. All you need to do is put in your email address. They send you a sticker. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Really good promotion. So, I mean, listen, whose fault did it? Is it? It's definitely Chastain's fault for sure. Uh, he even said that, you know, hey, I wrecked myself here. Um, but it's interesting because people talk about all the time, well, you know, he never gets the bad end of his stuff. He, he did this week, right? It fi- You know, that part of it caught up. But I think it goes unspoken or it, it gets overlooked that, he should be winning a lot more than he is. He's only won two races, and one of them was on the road course, and there was contact in that one. And But, like, you would think he'd be winning as fast as he is, and he's up front every week, as stellar as his pit crew is. Um, he should be winning more. Definitely should be winning more. It comes down to execution, right? It By does. It does. But But what I'm saying to you is that Perhaps if he was on the better side of some of the drivers, he would get a break here and there. And his races would go a little less confrontational because no one's cutting him a break. So there's always contact with him because no one's willing to just say, okay, come on by. Yeah. You know, you've cut me a break. So eh, come on by. Like, so there's not as much give and take probably with him. The guys are going to race him more aggressively which in turn, he races aggressive, so that equals the contact, which that is in turn maybe why he's not winning as much. I, 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 there could be no facts behind that, but I'm just saying it, it, it might it, not be a coincidence. Could it more just be that he's just overstepping his boundaries in these uh, crucial moments during the race when he has an opportunity to win? Well, I certainly think you have to manage races for sure. I mean... There is a time, there's a time and a place for everything. For like aggressive moves. Hey, this is like I know when there's key restarts that I got to nail this one. Or, you know, here in today's world, you got to nail them all. But I, you just know, starting on the front row, this is one where I've got to get the lead. I've got to get the lead. I can't get this guy any inches here. I can't cut him a break. If he gets loose, I ain't checking up. Like, you just. There's moments for that, but there's also other moments where it's like, we still got another, we got at least two more pit stops, at least probably another restart or two coming. Do I really need to do this exactly. right this second? Exactly. That's that's what I'm wondering about Chastain is that it seems like he's racing 110% from the drop of the green flag to the checkered flag. And when you're racing like that on lap 100 of 300, the more experienced the guy's going to be like, okay, go ahead. Mm-hmm. There's more to play for here. And then it's just catching up to him at the end of these races. Yeah. I mean, 
it, it's interesting because you know you look at the stat sheet right and you say well Hendrick Motorsports has dominated the the season that you know William Byron's got wins and Kyle Larson's got wins and they've just been the best I argue that I think that the one car in that team has been kind of right there with them they just they don't have as clean of races as the other ones for whatever reason. You know, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't watch all of his races and see why he doesn't win more. I mean, he's going to win a lot for sure in the future and probably starting this week. I, I, I tend to motivate guys in that kind of way. But it's it just seems like maybe he is getting it back and we just not are seeing it like. People are thinking, well, when's someone going to do something with Chastain or whatever, right? Like, maybe they are, and we just aren't seeing it. Maybe people aren't cutting them as much room as as they nor they they normally would, which is resulting in this contact happening. Yeah, like Kyle, the restart before yep. the last. Right? Yep. You, you, TV saw it coming, and certainly any fan at home saw that coming. That you know. Kyle was going to give him the door because he, he, I mean, not only did he lose the lead, he, he cost them three or four spots, which that was big. And then Chastain just kind of just drove in there and says, oh, I'm going to, he said, I wanted to squeeze him. I wanted to squeeze him. And he, he cost himself. Now he cost the five team in the process as well. But finally, it seems like Ross kind of got the bad end of his, his decision there for sure. Yeah. I do want to say I really hope that Ross does not change the way he races because I think what's happening right now is phenomenal. Yeah, I mean it's as a whole. It is it's great for the storylines. There's no question we're talking about it. Um this is what NASCAR needs, right? Is is these type of storylines you need someone to ruffle some feathers every now and then. You would think that it would be this guy this week, that guy the next week and it would just kind of ebbs and flows but man he is he's a magnet for it yeah i think he should just continue to race like a and embrace the the personality because the sport doesn't really have that anymore right i think you were talking about it um how you get booed or, or or one of the drivers who gets booed the most at driver intros but that's not because of how you race on the track and kyle I mean, bush I, I don't think and kyle bush now i feel like gets significantly less boos because he's not driving the 18 car so Listen, we don't it, have a heel in the If sport. it was because of what happens on track, Charles Chastain would get the most boot. I mean, he's he's gotten into or, or wrecked most all the top drivers, right? Right. I mean, but you would agree that of all the drivers I, in the sport, Ross right now is the biggest heel of the sport. Yeah. Maybe not in the eyes sure. of all the fans. Sure, but, sure, sure. And I think the sport needs that. Mm -hmm. And I don't think Kyle is that anymore. Is what I'm kind of getting at. He kind of filled that role before in my opinion, at least from the fan perspective. Sure, yeah, yeah, I, I agree with that for sure. I mean, he had his on-track persona, on-track. Yeah. I th I, like I said, we talked about it a few episodes ago, but I think he was very different. How Kyle Busch was on the racetrack versus off the racetrack, very different. I think Kyle Busch is one of the most respectful drivers on the racetrack. He, he He's like the Jimmy Johnson type guy that, like, he kicks ass and wins races, and he really doesn't make a whole lot of contact. Right. Like, it's just – he just had the black hat because of his persona, I think, off the racetrack. Yeah. Well, now we just got a guy who kicks ass. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Literal. Yeah. yeah. But it was fun. I mean, it was great to watch. I mean, I, I didn't get to see much of the <laughs> the front today by any means. But, you know. But, hey, I moved on in the bracket. Yeah. You want to? Should we go through a bracket we, update we here? We should. Um, because, you know, I'm sure whoever had – Kyle Larson against me in the bracket, boy, they were hating life. That was that's the, they were loving life for th that was an something like ESPN that. bad beat, as they say <laughs> on Scott Van Pelt's show. So, I mean, backdoor cover at the buzzer, bank shot, sixty-five feet, Denny Hamlin from nowhere, <laughs> boom, Kyle Larson's out. Denny Hamlin wins that matchup. <laughs> Love it. So. At the top. Yep. Um, so Chastain beat Suarez. Fantastic matchup, by the way, because both these guys DNF'd. It just so happened that one guy DNF'd earlier than the other. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Not often Chastain you can completed. DNF your way to a, to a dub. Yep. So Chastain beat Suarez. Keselowski beat Almirola. 
that wasn't a huge. Th- so there's really no upsets that happen there. So in the next round, Charlotte, we got Chastain versus Keselowski. Um, what's your early pick on that? Chastain. Okay. I mean, that's, you're just going to say chalk every time. Well, I went through this bracket. I filled out two brackets, and in both of my brackets, Chastain wins. Okay. All right. Uh, and then the next one, Bubba Wallace moving on beats Ryan Blaney. Uh, upset, right? Yeah. It's well, interesting Bubba because I looked at I'm, I'm looking at this right. Uh, Bubba Wallace is a 21 seed. He's now 15th in points. He's moved up six spot. He's moved on to the round of eight. And he's also moved up six spots in the point standings since these this thing got seated. So Bubba Wallace beats Blaney. Blaney's out. Uh, I bet you that hurts a few brackets. And then Chase Elliott beats Joey Logano, the 29 seed, the most <laughs> deadly 29 seed of all. Chase Elliott uh, beats Logano. Um, I, I, I can't remember... I think I had Logano there. I'm not really sure. I had Chase going out to Truex at Kansas. I did too. So, um, I'm not really sure who I had there. But now you've got Wallace against Elliott at Charlotte. Early and now, there. and now you're like, how can I bet against Bubba? Bubba's hot. Well, he's hot, but you, your picks already made. I mean, if you had to start over, would you? You're saying that you you'd take Bubba? I mean, Chase is very good, obviously, but. The stats are telling me the last five races I need to pick Bubba Wallace. He's had a top five he's, in five of the last six or something. Really? Yes. Well, he's so stat, he's, so stats say he's doing good. I, I I'm very proud of Bubba. He's doing doing a great job behind the wheel. Um, Harvick beat Stenhouse. That wasn't a surprise, but it was closer in the race than we thought for sure. You know, Ricky's yeah. team they they were good. Um, all weekend, uh, really, for the most part. They struggled a little bit in the long run in practice. I talked to Ricky, uh, but it looked like in the race. I mean, I kind of got stuck behind him early. He struggled in the long run, but I just, once I fell, I just never saw him again. He was he stayed up front, towards the front, and I, I didn't. So uh, that was matchup was closer than, there was only a few spots between those guys all day long. So Harvick uh, is now going to go against Byron, who beat Reddick. Uh, that was close. Reddick was in the wreck, the second to last wreck, I believe, or the last wreck. Not sure which one. He was on the he was on the third car on the bottom, fifth. He got barely clipped. Um, and so Byron's moving on. Obviously, Harvick and Byron at Charlotte. <clears throat> Who do you think? I like Harvick. Mm. Harvick just has a knack for now. Again, he he got a little help from the tower today. But he has a knack for just being there in these long uh, races where a driver is very important. That's at least how I see it in my head. So 600 miles at Charlotte, I like Harvick. I, even though the, the the Fords are a little off, I I, I definitely kind of agree with you. I, he I just think in general he's got a he's got a knack for Charlotte. Um, and then, boom, Hamlin takes out Larson. Just I beat the brakes off of him all day long. Total domination. <laughs> hey, survive in advance. Yeah. My friend Charlie said, uh, I'm going to go against. <laughs> so <laughs> this is amazing. This is <laughs> amazing. <laughs> we said we wouldn't say that. I know, but we already did once or twice. I didn't. I pro- uh, Well, you did. I promised, <laughs> Mom, you didn't. Yeah. Um, It'll bleep it. Bowman or Barry beat. Well, Barry beat Dylan. <laughs> Bowman slash Barry. <laughs> And you said, wait a minute, Barry raced today? Because cause Jared was really like, man, I didn't see that 48 car all day long. I don't think I did either. No. Here, let's just look at the, the race results here. Newman finished 28th, and it says he was running, but he was in a wreck, so I don't know if he was actually running. Chastain finished 29th. He was the first DNF. Then Josh Berry, who did finish running the race, and then the rest of the DNF. So Josh Berry finished the race, we basically, but finished behind guys that DNF'd. Yeah, well... I, I mean, I guess that shouldn't... So we basically possible, but had two brackets here decided by four DNFs. Yes. Right? So, 
with me knocking out Larson, I, I'm now going to go against uh, Bowman or Barry. Who do you like there? I mean, Bowman Barry is the, the Cinderella. So I'm You're like, right. They, ooh. I mean, yeah, the number technically doesn't show it, but they're a Cinderella. I, there. You know it's what? Two I'm going to say, I agree. The Bowman Barry is the Cinderella team of the Elite Eight here. So, hey, guess what? I saw where uh, one of the sports books actually put odds out for the bracket challenge. So all the matchups, and I'm sure they will do it. I encourage you just to find out who it is. Um, but they have a they have a big place in in Las Vegas. Um, uh, Caesar might have lived there once <laughs> <laughs> once before. Um, but they had matchup. They had odds on each one of these matchups at Darling today. Even no matter, it didn't matter if it was a huge favorite versus a huge underdog. So I'm sure at Charlotte they'll do the same thing. Um, this is great. This is what we wanted, right? We wanted uh, you know the, the 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 gambling guys and the sports books to uh, really embrace it and talk about it. And so um, I think they got some good matchups, and it's really worked out. Just how you'd want it to. I think when I started filling out this bracket, I thought, oh, this is easy. This guy's going to finish above this guy. This guy's going to finish above this guy. He always outruns him. But now that we're in this Elite Eight, there's some shocks, shockers in here. Yep. Now I got to beat the, I got to beat Cinderella. Yeah. You just need to finish the race, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's not If nice. you just finish the race That's on the Elite That's not nice. Line, well, I'm, look, I don't make the rules. I'm just saying that. Josh Berry finished a handful of laps down today. So if you just finish the race on the lead lap, it's more okay. than likely you'll, All right. you'll win the I, I trust you. I trust you. We'll do our best. We won that race last year. But then again, we won Darlington, too, and we we stunk it up today. Yeah. So, Well, I mean, uh, that pretty much recaps Darlington. The race. Yeah. You got anything else? Yeah. I want to know uh, your experience with the NASCAR 75 today. It was cool. I really appreciated NASCAR, you know, putting that together uh we got a pocket watch from jim france my dad will certainly appreciate that no it wasn't a pocket watch it was a like a tachometer oh real by the way no 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 <laughs> a tachometer you know, dude it tracks speed i have a picture of it I'll a stopwatch it, a stopwatch that's yes that's correct you said a tachometer it's like the same thing they track speed more or less <laughs> bento box <laughs> <laughs> yeah inside joke <laughs> yeah very inside joke um but yeah it was uh i guess it's a it's a what'd you just call it uh it's a it's a it's a it's an old school timing device i'm yeah. losing my it, train of thought here but it's a stopwatch it but it could be a temperature gauge in celsius as well that's possible <sighs> gosh all right this is going nowhere quickly it was good i appreciate it, it was a little brunch put together by nascar there was 33 drivers. Uh, yeah, ha about half. About half the drivers. Um, they said, you know, like I think 48 or something like that were still living um, from from the NASCAR 75. So it was good to see those, those faces. I mean, these are guys that I looked up to for such a long time. Um, I, it's just an honor to be in, in the room with them, to be honest with you, and, and hear all their accomplishments. Like, you, you really get to appreciate how great these drivers were in their own era or against each other, uh, the huge crown jewel races that they won. Um, it's just, it, it was a great, great thing for sure. Certainly an honor to be a part of it. Uh, they, they let us bring friends and family uh, to it and host a little lunch for us. So, Thank you to NASCAR for that, uh, Steve Phelps, Steve O'Donnell, um, and Jim France. That was a, certainly a, a great thing. Can, for can we give the people what they want? What do they want? A Carl, I mean, a Carl Edwards soundbite. You were talking to him at the brunch, and just people go nuts for Carl Edwards. So I just need. Uh, like what we talked about? What did we talk about? Or just, just something, a Carl Edwards something from today. Okay. Uh, we actually, we, so I don't know what it is. People kind of draw into Matt Kenseth around his table and w pretty sure pretty quickly. It was me, Matt Kenseth, Carl Edwards, and Kyle Busch 
all talking. This was the dream team that Joe Gibbs Racing had like 10 years ago. It was also, I mean, holy crap. Like in retrospect, thinking about it, I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I was teammates with those three guys. Like they were so good and like pushed each other like crazy. But I re- we brought up that Matt was always the kind of the guy who would, would, he wouldn't shove you into a fight, but he'd definitely give you a little help, right? And so, Matt, it was after the Richmond, uh, Carl Edwards and Kyle Bush incident where Carl knocked Kyle out of the way on the final corner, won the race. Well, they got into an argument on Monday, and they're shouting at each other, and <laughs> they're, Kyle's like... <laughs> trying to say he wants to fight Carl. There's no way he wanted to actually fight Carl. And then like saying, all right, well then let's go or whatever. And then <laughs> Matt from the top rope over in the corner of the room is like, let him fight, <laughs> let him fight. <laughs> and so it, he's just that guy that like would like, Hey, did you hear what that guy said about you? <laughs> like just to kind of rally you up. So Matt knows how to, you know, get, get to you and press your button. So it was cool to to get to see him again. I, my kids and his kids uh, hung out uh, a few summers ago, and um, we got to get them all together. He, he's got a whole litter full of uh, daughters like I do. So, um, but it was cool to see so many of my old teammates and Carl Edwards and I've you know, I I never forget when Carl just up and retired. I'm like, nope, there's got to be some other reason. He's going back to Ford. There's something. There's something he's got some rhyme or reason he's doing this. He's trying to get more money or something. And I just remember uh, calling Carl right uh, after that. And he's like, no, man, I just, I'm out. I I just, I have my reasons. He he just said, I have my reasons. And still you hear him on TV today. He just won't, he won't say why. We all know why. I think Kenny Wallace has actually got a pretty accurate take on why he left the sport um but yeah it's uh just need that you just don't have that confirmation he just won't give it to you he's just that private to not give it to you and and always keep you wanting more that's what i respect about carl so you you wonder what he's thinking sometimes unlike me you always know what i'm thinking so uh it was cool. He did a great job in the booth, yeah, by the did. way. I thought he was awesome in the booth. Um, Carl Edwards for third man, third man in the booth. My vote. He was yeah. act. He was actually my uh, favorite driver growing up. Really? Yeah. When I was. What drew you to Carl Edwards? Oh man, how old was I? He was racing trucks for Roush. So whatever year that was, his teammate was John Wood. And all the race shops were over here in whatever that street is called. Mm-hmm. And uh, when I was a kid, we'd, we'd park at one end and just go through all the race shops, get the hero cards, and went into that Roush truck shop. And they had a big glass window. And Carl had come out from behind the window in the shop and said, I'm Carl Edwards. You want my autograph? Really? And I was just like, uh, yeah, sure. I had no idea who you are. And he's like, yeah, I'll be in the Cup Series one day. And Wow. Yep. And then... A couple of years later, obviously he he made it to the Cup That's Series cool. and then more. Yeah, no, I I you know everyone knows about the story of him, um, and his business cards and whatnot that he, he used to have back there. You know, yeah. if you're looking for a race driver, you're looking for me. If you're looking uh, for an autograph, here it is. <laughs> yeah, no, but it, it's great. Uh, he's a great dude. He he really is. He he's certainly introverted. He keeps his life pretty private. He he stays out of the out of the limelight. Um, just so y'all know, to do I, I will break a little news. Not to rat on Carl. Carl has Twitter. Burner account. He definitely has a burner account. He knows what's going on. Uh, I I may or may not been sitting beside him at a comp meeting, and Twitter. I look. Twitter was open. I, we will never if know what name he's. I I guarantee it has. I'm surprised he didn't get wiped out with all the other bots from Elon Musk from inactive accounts, or maybe he's. Just somebody that's just every week just digging, you know, digging uh, storylines. So you just never know with Carl. But 
just for the race fan and all the media out there, Carl has social media. He just it's out you'll there somewhere. never you will never know about it. So uh it's great. Uh great weekend. Not a great weekend for me, but we're gonna rebound. <clears throat> we went from white hot in my opinion. We're we're now we're, we've backed it down. We're we're now hot again. We have to maintain white hot for multiple weeks. So I still think we've scored more points than anyone in the last five weeks since I said this. So I, I'm a man of my word. We got the All Star race coming up this weekend. I'm ultra pumped about that for sure. Um, it's a short track. I love those. It's a tire wear racetrack. I love those. I, I said in the media this weekend that I think it's going to be like playing Mario Kart, trying to hit the gold tokens. And the gold tokens are the new parts of the, the pavement. The new pavement. Like, I think we're going to be swerving all over the racetrack to, like, hit these grippy yeah. spots to make our car go. So, because that track has so little grip. Uh, but excited for it. I heard the atmosphere. It, it's just going to be great. It's going to be good. Yeah. My friend Charlie, who helped, you know, put it together and, like, organize all that stuff, he said, like, it feels like Field of Dreams. We're like, I, you're just in the middle of nowhere and then all of a sudden boom here's the racetrack and it's lit up and it's just it's definitely going to have kind of a grassroots feel to it yeah before we sign off here let's let's power rank some some paint schemes from today okay uh i'm i'm good with that i'll give you just my favorite couple um I, for me, Chase Elliott was P1 just because I was a Bill Elliott, Bill Elliott fan. I, it's interesting. The most simple schemes sometimes are the best schemes. And it's just one solid color. You stick the decals on it of whatever the sponsor is, and that was the paint scheme. Yeah. You know, you look at a 1990s or a 2000s poster, and you could just see the cars lined up, and you knew whose every car was because it was the same every week. Now it's just it was confusing. Which brings me to my next point. And all right, let me just, I'll, I'll say that it's Chase Elliott P1. Um, I know I'm missing a few. Well, here, you got your list here in front of you. Where? The bracket. Um, I don't know. I mean, the ugliest one for sure was the one car. No, no one ever looks good in brown. That's why they don't make clothes in brown, except for Kanye. Um, that was the ugliest car. <laughs> what about Almirola's? I might be biased. Uh, the junior throwback? I, all right. Has this run its course? Has this throwback run its course? It might have because Kyle Busch threw back to himself. <laughs> <laughs> Four <laughs> weeks ago. <laughs> that wasn't his fault. He doesn't make the paint schemes. But I just feel like everyone's paint scheme is from a different era. I don't even recognize half the cars. All it does is make more, me more confused. As a driver in the race, I don't even know who I'm freaking racing against. Because whose car is this? And who are they throwing back to? I never heard of them. Or I, I just, I don't know. I just, everyone was so bought in for the first couple of years. Even the crew guys were decked out. And I just feel like it's lost its luster a little it's bit. It's lost its luster. I'm sorry, Carrie Tharp. I it just I don't know how we can revive it. Make I don't know, let's make it mandatory or something. Like everyone's got to run a '90s scheme or something. You could do. But. You could probably. I mean, you you've got so many good ideas. <laughs> oh, sh sh um, you could just have some sort of fan engagement where you have a, a vote or something, yeah. and the winner get something cool or maybe there's a trophy or something clock. that they goes to the team maybe a clock <laughs> <laughs> yeah maybe martinsville's got extras um, i don't know you I'm, you could definitely bring it back to make it yeah it, it, again. it's just it'll be tough it because the more you do things over and over and over it just it doesn't it just loses its luster for whatever reason and it just seems like we've kind of lost the identity of what air? I mean, I asked Jamie Little on the grid. I was like, "What air are we supposed to be throwing back to?" I, I don't even know because yeah. some of them's from evidently Kyle Busch four <laughs> weeks ago to uh, the twenty two car. I, I mean, I sort of recognize the scheme, but not really. And then Dale Juniors. I, I don't know. I just it's too confusing. 
I don't recognize any of the cars. I agree with the folks on social media saying we need to bring back the identity. Uh, oh, I think it was Bob Pockers that wrote like things that we need to bring back. I disagree with a few of them, such as testing. But he he is right on a few things that like we need to get car identity back because, holy crap, man, it's so difficult to figure out who's in what and especially when you bring in throwback, I don't know who they're throwing back to and it's bring throwing back to 12 different eras that we don't even know. Yeah. It doesn't help either that the throwback race is no longer the Southern 500. That doesn't help either. I don't think. Yeah, I guess so. Um, yeah, no, I see your point there, but the Southern 500 is a big enough race where you would, I don't know that you want to have throwback during the Southern 500 just because that is a major event in our sport. And you probably want to have sponsors that have their main logos on the car or their normal identity, I would think. That's an argument. Yeah. I did think, though, before we close this episode out, that the, um, how do you put this? The number 45, 2311 racing, Kurt Busch racing, Toyota Camry was cool. Yeah. No, yes, that was to his Sharpie car, yeah. right? But the logo on the hood was KB. Kurt Busch, KB. Yeah. I mean, that was hey, cool. we're, we're, we're giving props to KB, one of the top 75, and uh, and a great partner here at, at uh, 2311 So and Toyota partner. So shout out to him. And, uh, well, I mean, now that we've talked about the race, I think it's time to bring our first guest in. What do you think? Let's bring her this in. This is a surprise. Let's, no one knew. Our Out of the blue, we were going to have our very first guest. Not even us at an hour and a half ago. Nope. This took this took some convincing, by the way. Reluctantly. We yeah. we talked about this last week. You said, I think we should have my mom on. I think you're watching a lot of episodes with Dale and, <laughs> and his wife, right? And that's how, I think that's how that came to be. No, I'm guessing. I, I got some advice on it uh, for sure. But I'll say that, uh, yeah, you really missed out. Uh, the really the content that was worth having was in the first 15 minutes of our car ride to Darlington today on Mother's Day. We carpooled all of us together, me, mom, Jared, um, and the whole crew. So that was fun. It took a while for you to get the GoPro uh, going, but by the time you did, it everything kind of died. Well, down. yeah, so I, had, I didn't necessarily think that we would all be carpooling together. So I wasn't prepared for that. And I get in the car and like you said, you start talking and it's just a great conversation about things that she does. In well, we didn't time. get out of the driveway until I dropped a few F-bombs. Yeah. Right. And that's when <sighs> mom here guys, do you hear mom get up close to the microphone? And so people can hear you sighing every time I, <laughs> I drop oh, an F-bomb. I do. I do. She hates it. I yeah. hate it. She but does. There's no reason for it well i listen i believe it's a way to express how very passionate i am about a particular thing that we're talking about or i mean and it's also the only word that you can make a complete sentence out of by just saying that word yeah we won't say it of course Good. but since this mother yeah so since this mother's day my my pact is for this show I'm going to drop no F-bombs for this show. Just Thank in the, you. Just in this Thank segment you. while she's sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, yeah. So she, she appreciates that. So, so yeah, I mean, um, we wanted to bring my mom on for Mother's Day, obviously, because I believe my, I got the best mom and the most supportive mom. She's um, She's been around, and, of course, she's been around my whole life. But she's she's been around and supported my racing career. Um, and it really kind of goes unsung. They are the unsung heroes, right? The parents that make sacrifices to, uh, get their kids to where they're at. And, uh, my, it's no different with my parents. Uh, we came from very humble beginnings, I guess you could say. Yeah. Uh, we were talking about today in the car about, you know, uh, Jared was asking a few questions about like what he, he was just kind of going through his phone, like <laughs> asking stuff that maybe would spur up a conversation and I was like, yeah, I just wish I had a bigger palate when it comes to eating. My mom, we, we all cooked very normal, plain food. Yeah. Um, but a lot of that was 
driven because my dad was so picky eater, right? And then I just picked up whatever we we ate all the time. But mom was like, "Yeah, well, it's because I had to go to work, and I, you know, yeah, she said, you get know, home at seven, eight o'clock at night, and didn't have a whole lot of time to put something together." Yeah, I mean, but what we did, you know, one thing about racing though, racing really is what we did as a family, right? It, you know, we didn't. We tried other sports, right? I tried t-ball and stuff like that and baseball basketball I tried, I tried basketball i wasn't good at any of them like i was just very average at best at, at actually all you were pretty good at which but point? the time came um that he had to make a decision because he couldn't do go-kart racing and another sport because they occur at the same time yeah. on the weekend. Yep. Yeah. So he had to make a choice which one that he wanted to do. And I clearly knew which one I was better at. <laughs> so wait, wait, which sport were we talking? Were we baseball, baseball, basketball? baseball was the one I remember that had a lot of conflict. Yes. And what would happen is that we had Oops. other players. Yeah, this, my mom has a really loud <laughs> ringer. Uh, and I tell her all the time, Mom, the ringer, the ringer. Mom. I mean, it, it, she's got her flashlight <laughs> blinking every time a text comes. It's That's just... what happens when you turn old. <laughs> mom thinks she's older than she really is. It's I have people no, in my I basketball know how league that are older than you, Mom. Huh? Think about that. I have people older than you in my basketball league. Not much older. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that part's <laughs> probably true. Uh, but no, it's you know, racing is what we did. For forever, uh, I think her really her passion for racing came when she got to get in a go kart herself in the Powder Puff race uh, oh. <laughs> with a bunch of moms at Amelia Motor Raceway, uh, and she was excited when she got out of the car. But she's my biggest fan for sure. Runs my fan club that's been going for decades now, and uh, she's always the one. Whenever you send fail, fan mail, please don't send fan mail. But she she gets it, and then <laughs> she. <laughs> sets it all out for me to sign and stuff here in the basement. So she's really in touch with my fans, uh, you know, for sure. There's a lot of, you know, fans that have been fans of mine for such a long part of my career that she's got to know them personally. Ever I mean, since the beginning. I mean, for God, that yep. there's Your only a handful year. of them at this point. So, um, you know, you, you know, but you know all my fans true by first name. Fans. I agree. I mean, they stick with I you agree. through thick and thin. For sure. Through all those boos. Oh, speaking of it. How do you... How do you how that do you was feel about awful boos? today. So you don't like the boos? I, I, I don't... I mean, I know... I know why they're there. Why, why are they there? <laughs> because he's so <laughs> outspoken. Agree. Agree. Yes. I don't think it's what I do on the racetrack. But track, I don't sure. think today was appropriate because they were showing... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? Displeasure. Acknowledging the top 75 NASCAR yeah. drivers. Yeah, I mean, it was interesting. You would think for sure the fans would just acknowledge. You know, it doesn't matter whether you liked or disliked those drivers back when they right. were around. And, and like, you know, I'm standing front and behind all the legends like Jeff Gordon, Bill Elliott, you know, Jeff Bodine, all these guys, and you know, everyone. I mean. It was an enormous <laughs> boo. Yeah. Um, and I was I just like, whoa, what'd I do? Like, I think <laughs> I saw a picture of it um, where they all were turning, looking at they, you. They were. And they yeah. were like, the picture was on my computer. <laughs> yeah. but, but you know what they all said, though? They said, that's a good thing. Yeah. Jeff Bodine, he's like, hey, that's a, that's a good thing. Bill Elliott, you know, same thing. So it was like. And it's not like it's, some of them haven't gone through. Yeah, that. for sure. I, I get it. I see your point, though. I, you know, probably a little disrespectful in that setting, for sure. If it's driver intros, I think it's whatever, right? It's free yeah. game if you don't, you know. Right. But, I mean, for so long, Kyle Busch got tons and tons of booze, and all of a sudden, he switched it's over switched to, to you. Over. Yeah, no, yeah. it switched to me. I mean, Joe Logano's been the most for... A while too, him and Kyle were back and forth, but I've clearly taken the Kyle's crown spot at JGR. Yeah, I, you know, listen, I think there's a certain amount of fans anyway that don't. You know, Tony Stewart. There's a lot of fans that did not like when we switched manufacturers back in 2008, and then he switched back, and then bam, they they love him again. So that plays a factor. 
you know, getting into it with a few hundred guys, that'll that'll certainly knock you down the 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 favoritism list for sure. Uh, but yeah, I I always said you know that like the last thing you want is claps. Like claps just means. Woo! All right, all, all right. Next, next guy. Next, next guy. Yeah. <laughs> right? You know, when you're booing or you're cheering, you have some sort of feeling about that person, one way or another. So, I, I do think that a lot of it certainly comes from comments, outspokenness. Yep. I think that no one uh, likes an opinionated person, but um, and there have been many a time when I have called you up and said, "Did you really say this?" <laughs> she does. She says it all the time. But as soon as I hear your part of it mm -hmm. as to w instead of just the snippet of it that somebody on the radio might mention, um, they don't get the whole scope yeah. of the conversation. Yeah. I mean, you read headlines. I mean, it's why we started this podcast, really, right? Is that Dale Jr. thought the same thing. He says, well, I, I think you're misunderstood. And if you, you just get the whole word out there then i think that people will understand you better but yeah um I'm, I'm not here to try to be the most popular driver or, or anything like that i'm not trying to win any fans over the, you like me or you don't but i i certainly um you know my poor mom guys think about that when you <laughs> boo me it's my mom is <laughs> sitting back there just hands and head just <laughs> shaking her head and and you know me and mom had a good heart to heart uh, a few months ago about you know, my outspokenness. And I was just like, mom, this is who I am. Like, I, I hate I mean, to, he, he got it from, who did he get it from? His dad, not from me <laughs> because I'm the type of person that, um, I want to keep everything calm. So I'd yes. rather just, <laughs> just go along with mom the flow is not the and not say type. anything. Yes. Yeah. Right. If the, the steak is not cooked properly at the restaurant, you're just going to eat it exactly. anyway, right? Exactly. Now, my sister Lisa <laughs> yes. sending that thing back, <laughs> right? Because she takes after, after her dad 100%. So. I feel like I'm a mix of you two. You are. You are. For I sure. mean, you used to be really shy, which wow. I think people take as being um, rude and... Uh, just not a nice person because you don't say anything well i certainly uh i am introverted except when i'm with my friends right right like when i'm with my friends i i'm definitely a lot different person for sure um but yeah i mean i i, I like to stick to my tight knit crowd and 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 that's about it but it's uh i mean it, certainly mom was one that's like doesn't like Denny to be in the news for controversy. That's right. for sure. Exactly. You know, when the whole yeah. Ross thing started last year, she's like, just don't, just ignore it. Just, <laughs> it'll be fine. You know, karma will work itself out. And this is after Gateway, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A few wrecks later, she's like, okay, okay, okay. Whatever you got to do, you know, right? So, uh, so you, you want to ask, like, what does she it, think of? Yeah. So what, what, I guess since you brought that up, let's let's get into that. What, how, what did you watch every one of these races? You're in the bus watching. Yep. What did you think of uh, the ending of today's race with Ross and the evolving Ross Chastain saga? That's since more the question, right? It's like, what's your opinion of it? Yeah. Um, same as last week <laughs> um, when it involved you. I mean, I think it's just racing. Yeah. I don't think that they do it on purpose. Um, even Ross. Yeah. I think you just get into it at the time that you don't think of the consequences. Yeah, that, that's that's fair. I mean, certainly I think that, um, you know, when I talk to, to Ross, and I've said this many times, that I think that, there's something that goes on when he's in the moment and his and his brain's thinking about, well, what am I going to do to make a move here that it, he does get locked into one thought and it just, he, yeah. he gets blinded of all the, well, what about what else? What's, what's the result of that? Like, is there another way? Is there another Avenue? Um, but everyone works differently. So, but, but what about when that was all at the expense of your son? <laughs> 
Um, it's easy to watch when you're just an innocent bystander, right? But Right. I mean, it's hard to s- sit there and hear people say all these awful things um, when your opinion is different. But, as I've always said, that's what makes NASCAR such a fun sport is because you can have five members of a family <laughs> all rooting for five different people. We saw it today on the TV, right? The Kyle Larson husband and the Ross Chastain uh, wife that were uh, <laughs> th- that that they were showing on Fox, and it was you know the the wife was rooting for Chastain, the husband. Oh was, right, yeah. Yes. And then when they yep. crash, <laughs> she looks right over the husband <laughs> and says, "I'm ready to go home." <laughs> <laughs> so that was awesome. And, I mean, yeah. listen, that's why I liked Bill Elliott when I grew up. It's because my dad liked Dale Earnhardt. Right. I just wanted yeah. to root yep. against his rival. Yeah. Right. And so that's that is what's great about it. Right. Is that it, it creates conversation. It creates storylines. Uh, certainly it, it is exciting for sure. Um, but, yeah, it's 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 awesome that uh, we, we convinced you to come on today. Uh, on a special Mother's Day, I just want to say thank you to you for being the yeah. best mom, the most supportive mom. My mom sacrificed a lot to help me get to where I uh, you know, got to. And certainly it was not an easy road. I never would encourage any family to take the risks that we took financially right. to get me to this point. But luckily, uh, it did pay but off like your end. dad always said while we were going through all this uh, stuff and putting forth all of our money towards it. Some people use their money for vacations, uh, to buy a boat, Mm -hmm. to do all different things. We decided to put our money in giving you the ability to do um, what we could to and and I'm And I'm imagining at some point they realized I was not the college type. Yes. So... (laughs) <laughs> yeah. yeah, we'd I always say this they didn't is your need college to stay. fun. Yeah, <laughs> so you, you better <laughs> you better be good at it. You better have a skill. Right. Yeah, I tell you what, the day that he graduated, I was so happy. High school. Oh, uh, high school. <laughs> yes, yes. Listen, I was Jared, so happy. Back then, I was part of a huge class, <laughs> and I. I am certain that they gave me a diploma just to get me out of school. <laughs> I mean, I'm certain of it. Yeah. But I always, I, I just, I was so tired in school because I, I was on the work program. My dad started Chessfield Trailer and Hitch. And so I would get out of school at noon every day. Then I'd go to work at my dad's trailer shop and I'd work till 6 p.m., 5 or 6 p.m. whenever the last customer was gone. And then I work on the race car, worked on the race car till 10, 11 at night. So I didn't do my homework. Like I didn't do anything. I just, then I went home. I'm exhausted. I'm tired. I sleep. I barely make the school bus in the morning or I I drive to school. And then I'm just figuring out, well, man, how am I going to pass this class? Like school was the last thing on my mind because it was all about racing and work. That's all I did. And so. And his dad always made him work on Saturdays. We were open part of the day on Saturdays. And before he could load up the car to go racing, um, he would have to run the shop that Saturday. Yeah. Before yeah. We left. You actually worked almost 40 hours a week Plus while school. going to school. Yeah. And I had to work on my race car. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I yes. mean, yeah. I mean, my and you dad. You tried to sneak out yeah. of work and go to. Yeah. In like between customers store. and yeah. stuff, it's slow. <laughs> I'm going over, sneaking over the race car, seeing like what I got to tinker on there. But yeah, I mean, my dad used to say to me, like, this isn't my hobby, it's your hobby. So, like, this isn't yeah. just a, you know, and boy, you just you sit hear back and drive. And boy, you through the shop, Denny, get over here. <laughs> oh, I, I could, I hear the echoes now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because I was the, the race car shop was basically just part of the trailer shop. It was in the last couple bays of it. And so, yeah, he would catch me over there working on the race car during work hours and yeah. customers would roll in. He would be pissed. So, <laughs> I mean, it was, it was fun times. Though. I, the one thing about, I loved about the trailer shop though, it was, I enjoyed my job. Like I loved going to work every day. I loved being in customer service. Um, I loved trying to figure out a, 
wiring problem or you know welding or fabricating or whatever I had to do that day. So it was a fun job. And you were good at it. Yeah, I mean, I I had to learn so quickly because my dad had back issues. So, you know, he he only could hang around work till two, three in the afternoon. He'd have to go home, and and so you know he he left me an eighteen year old pretty much to run that company. Right. <laughs> you know, for the most part, and so that's uh, I got I got my jump start on running a business pretty early. Well, that explains a lot because I feel like everyone looks at you and says, oh, Denny, he's a full-time race car driver. Oh, and now he's a full-time race <laughs> car owner. And now he's starting a podcast. Why the F would you want to <laughs> bother doing that too? So Thank you, uh, Jared. A lot. Well, no, I'm Did, just saying. He's, you he's, didn't drop. You said that. Oh, I thought about that well before that came out of my <laughs> mouth. I said, I can't, I can't say that word. Um, well, well, Mom, thank you. Wait, hold, before she oh. leaves, I just, before you leave, and we kind of just talked about this, but obviously today, a special day being Mother's Day, but also Denny got his NASCAR 75 recognition. I'm just yes. curious when you were there at the brunch watching him get called up on the stage and, and recognized for the honor and then standing behind all of these oh, legends well, who yes. I thought you probably watched on your TV as bigger yes, than life characters. Absolutely. What you were thinking in that moment. Um almost brought me to tears <laughs> never did we ever think i mean at the time that he his entire life said that he wanted to be a race car driver our hopes were that he would at least get the opportunity to race against them race with them be one of them never did we even think about what you know Winning a Daytona 500, <laughs> uh, much less winning three Daytona yeah. 500s. Um, never crossed our mind that he'd be one of the top 75 drivers of all times. Um, just, it amazes me, and it amazes me the person that he has become um, from that kid that didn't want to go to school, didn't want to study. Um, and now that's all he does. I mean, he studies everything and um, has made us very, very proud. My mom was one of my first phone calls after the NASCAR 75. And, yes. uh, you know, just saying how proud she was of me, obviously, it, it, it certainly meant uh, a lot to me because we, I mean, it, it all, I'm here because of the, the sacrifices that my parents made. So, uh, thank you. Just want to say thank you and bring you on and introduce uh, Mama Lou. She um, actually, one last thing too. Thank you for sticking up for me on Twitter. Uh, you, you, you did posted a tweet for the first time in forever because of the, of the I whole. I never and I did whole, know Mama Lou posted a tweet. She and I did. didn't know if I was doing it right. I, mean, <laughs> I don't even know if it showed up. And it did it, it only only replies it, it only to Dave Moody. Because okay. what did you say? What, what it you was say? it was about the whole Martinsville clock thing, basically. Uh -huh. and, and what I was saying is, uh, basically, I was poo pooing on the uh, the All Star the trophy. trophy. Yeah. yeah, you know that. By the way, I think is a beautiful piece of art. I just don't know that it's a trophy. It's a piece of art. It's not a trophy. But that's that's it's not that's a fine. trophy because they don't put any any. Um, Markings of All Star Race winner, right? The May date or whatever, twenty something, twenty twenty three, and then and then that kind of brought up the whole Martinsville clock thing because and the clock doesn't have that on it. Not I, all of them. No. My clocks are in boxes in my garage because it it's just a you know it is just a clock. I actually saw it's not just a it's clock. not just a clock. Let me be clear about. It. I understand the significance of. I know I'm getting off the hinges here, of the significance of the Ridgeway clock because that's what. The closest, right. the biggest business, I guess, in Martinsville that there is, right? We'll make a co commemorative trophy of a Ridgeway clock. Like, you know, just like they do at Talladega, right? They've got that that yeah, thimble yeah. And, and the Michigan trophy has got it. Like, I get that. But you, I like you said, I, you I have one of my Martinsville on clocks. I have you, one of the clocks, but I don't know what date or that it was a trophy and the thing is is that when he's older 
and has grandkids and that, and they see these clocks, um, if he's no longer around, what are they going to know about these clocks? Because you had, we had a grandfather clock in our right, home. Right, in our home. In, in, in Virginia when I was growing up. And so she's got that clock and she's got the Martinsville clock. And you were saying, I don't know which one's See, I which. think that's news to most people. I thought up until you tweeted about it, I thought the date and everything was engraved no. in the glass on no. the clock. No, no. And actually you Clay could Campbell, have it done. Clay Campbell is a great be- dude. I guarantee you he'll have it on the next Martinsville clock. I, I talked to him this weekend. He was, a lot of change happens because <laughs> of this show. No, I know. I guarantee it. And, and listen, I am not... I understand the significance of winning at Martinsville. I, I under, love those clocks. I understand the clock yes. totally, right? But for my mom's sake, <laughs> please just put, tell me which please, clock. Please signify the date. that this is a trophy yeah. yes. and not just a grandfather yeah, clock. Yeah, and the date. For my mom. Yes. Bef- before you leave here, Mary Lou, would you ever do a ride along with him? I'm just curious. I already did. Oh, you did? She did. I oh. did. It did not go well. At what track? It was in Atlanta. Yeah. Before the, I mean, it's basically the same, but I held it wide open. Of course, I was yeah. up against the wall and she was just, she yes. was not happy with me. Uh, was this before GoPros came out? Mm. I mean, who knows? I'm sure there's some sort of video of it, but. No, there is no video. You don't think there it. wasn't an in car? No. no? Uh-huh. I thought maybe, or did I grab your phone and was I recording you as I was driving? You oh, there's no been, way you allowed that I don't think happen. it's on there. Yeah, mm. there was some reason why we couldn't do it. I think it was because I was holding on so hard. I had nowhere to, <laughs> uh, no way to hold the hold the um, phone <laughs> to tape it. I think the feel like there's a lot of turbulence in that in those cars, right? Oh yeah. my! <laughs> I, I had no idea when you go around the corners, the G forces. Uh, I had no idea. I says, "How do you do this for?" <laughs> hundreds of laps you know being close to other cars it's just amazing mom thanks for coming on i know you were it took a lot of convincing you were really worried about coming on here and not being able to do it but you were great you were perfect you didn't know the uh, the questions you did not i didn't 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 know know any of the questions questions. i was trying to get the questions ahead of time (laughs) so i could be thinking about it that's a pro move Uh, (laughs) it all comes on the fly all right well thank you and uh we love you and see you tomorrow okay sounds good Thanks. Thanks again, Mary Lou. And then for all our listeners out there, don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, uh, leave a five-star review wherever you get your podcast, and follow at Dirty Mo Media across all socials. He's at Denny Hamlin, and I'm at Jared D. Allen. We'll see you next week. See you guys. Check out Dirty Mo Media on Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram.